Today we're going to talk about the uh, the bitter vegetables, the ones that I actually really love. I know not everyone does. The whole escarole on the radicchio family are all bred from dandelions actually these are some that i just picked from the lawn outside dandelion Donc de Lyon, is the uh, the french name or uh, the old english name is actually wet your bed <laughs> because they are a, a, a diuretic they're a kind of purging vegetable and if you're an angry person i'm also advised that it's a good sort of purging way of cleansing your liver because apparently anger goes to your liver. I was told I was an angry person. I don't think I am angry anymore, but I still love dandelions and radicchio and escarole. Radicchio is probably the best known member of the family and there are many, many different types of radicchio in Italy specific to different areas. But this one is the uh, Chioggia one, which is, tends to be round, sort of cannonball-like, and it's the one that's probably best known in the UK. Uh, this one is Treviso. It's more like a little gem or a cos lettuce in shape. They taste pretty similar. I would say they're interchangeable. This one's better for grilling. And then this one is uh, one of my favorites. This is the um, Pan de Souk, which is grown on my farm in France. Pan de Souk Sugarloaf Chicory. The wonderful thing about the family from a farmer's point of view is they're much more cold tolerant than the lettuce family. So they'll take quite hard frosts. So we can be cutting them out in the field right up until Christmas, you know, sometimes even beyond. I often go out in the field and cut the regrowth of the radicchio uh, right through to the spring. They have lots of um, virtues in the kitchen and lots of virtues for us in the field. I mean, I've got, these are the ones that, this is one that I just cut from the field this morning. That's one of the Chioggia Radicchio. I mean, it's just a beauty. You know, absolutely huge. They're super vigorous. They don't get any diseases, don't get any pests. You know, they are a dream to grow. But I promise you, the reason why I want you to eat them is not that they're easy to grow. It's because they are delicious and really, really good for you. I mean, I love bitter flavors. My wife loves bitter flavors. So we, we eat a lot of these in salads. But, you know, some people don't. We're all different. And occasionally I'll have someone around who really, you know, winces at the first taste of the salad. So if you really don't like bitter, think more about cooking it. Think about combining it with particularly dairy. If you're going to cook the, the endive, you know, a traditional way for the, uh, the endive in, in northern France and Belgium is to perhaps cook it mildly and then make a bake with a kind of bechamel sauce. So kind of thinking like you're making a cauliflower cheese or a macaroni cheese, you know, that sort of comfort and attenuation that comes from the kind of cheesiness, you know, takes away the bitter flavor. And if you put some thyme in there as well, that can work really, really well with, with bitter. If you do decide to make a salad with it, I mean, I would say these were the mildest of the family, and especially if you go for the mid leaves, you know, you can sweeten the dressing. You can use a sherry vinegar, you can put some sugar in the dressing, and you can put some fruit in it, some figs or peaches. Uh, can go really well. When you're deciding which recipe to cook, how to prepare them, you know, you've got to first decide <laughs> your enthusiasm for bitter. We're going to make a, uh, a radicchio risotto with red wine, which is a bit unusual, but I absolutely promise you that it works really well with radicchio, much better than white wine. It's a bit of a surprising one, that one. So I started by just cooking down some onions, a bit of celery, and then I've stirred in the um, risotto rice for a couple of minutes. Uh, and then we're just gonna bung in as much radicchio as you, I mean, I would probably put all of a whole big one like that in, so I'm just gonna roughly chop it. We're just gonna cook this down a bit before starting to add the stock. So the radicchio's collapsed down. I've probably cooked it for five minutes or so. Next thing is to add some wine. You can be pretty generous, I don't know. Two glasses, even three. Because it's gonna be cooked for half an hour, it won't overwhelm the flavor. I'm gonna be pretty generous there. That's about half a bottle, I think. <laughs> Hope I haven't overdone it. I think it will be all right. And then you're just carrying on as if any other risotto, so to cook that until it's absorbed. Probably take 25 minutes to cook. I'm gonna add some salt. I'm using a, my own stock, so I know there's not loads of salt in there. So I'm gonna be pretty generous. Bitterness and salt do go really well together. It, sweetens the bitterness, I suppose. When your risotto is done, put some knobs of butter in on the top and just let it melt away and then stir it through and serve straight away. Maybe stir in some Parmesan as well. The dairy, and particularly the butter, kind of complements the bitterness and kind of um, tones it down a little bit, I guess. I mean, I do think it's, it is one of my favorite dishes. <laughs> uh, I think it's absolutely um, delicious. It's yeah, edging on the bitter side, but I mean, you know, we could put less radicchio in, a little bit more butter, and I think, you know, even non-bitter lovers would like that. 
So if risotto isn't your thing, I, I suggest trying um, griddling it. We've got a uh, cast iron griddle here. You can also do them under the grill or do them in the oven, but I do think griddling is best if you've got one. So I'm just gonna slice the panda soup right down the middle, and I'm gonna do the same with one of these um, radicchios, these pointy ones, the kind of little gem-shaped ones. They're called Treviso. They're quite widely grown. They're particularly good for grilling, so very, very pretty. And I'll tell you what we'll do. One of each. I just put a bit of oil in the, uh, on the cut side, let that soak its way down in. And we're gonna put that face down on the grill and that will sort of gently steam and griddle it. So on it goes. Probably gonna take about five minutes and you wanna leave it until it's really well browned on the underside and then turn it over and do the other side a bit quicker. In Belgium, it's traditional to wrap an endive in ham smother it in <laughs> bechamel sauce and bake it. I have to say it's not my favorite way of eating it. Okay, so these uh, look pretty done. So there's the panda soup or sugar loaf chicory. That's the radicchio. Just with a baked potato, maybe with a bit of ham. I think that'd be lovely as a main course. I mean, you could serve it with some lardon scattered over, or I think actually it makes a really good sandwich. You can just pull it apart and um, and, and, and make a sandwich again, you know, maybe with ham or bacon. It always goes well with those things, but it would also be good with cheese. I mean, it is still um, quite bitter. I'm guessing that the panda soup will be less so, especially those um, inner leaves. You know, if you're not a bitter lover, I wouldn't recommend this one. This is a bit hardcore, I suppose. <laughs> Beautiful, simple, pretty quick supper. I don't think I've ever seen um, sugarloaf chicory or panda soup in, in the shops. So, but if you get one arrive in your veg box or if you order one from us, it might come like that. It might even be even bigger than that, which is quite intimidating. But you don't worry, they have an incredible shelf life in the fridge and you can just keep on peeling off a couple of leaves and using it in a salad, just, you know, maybe just one leaf and mix that up with um, some little gem lettuce or some sweeter flavors if you're not a better lover and you can still be eating it a month later. I mean, they have an incredible shelf life or you can just chop it down from the ends, but always throw away the, the brown bit. Don't be scared by it. <laughs> Don't feel you have to eat it in one sitting. You know, you can, uh, they, they will last really at least a month in the bottom of the fridge. So the next thing we're gonna do is make a, it's a bit of a classic salad for this family. Uh, we're gonna use a mixture of radicchio and the sugarloaf chicory and pears, I might put some figs on, and walnuts. Uh, it's, a, it's one of my absolute all-time favorites. That is lovely, but as, <laughs> as I eat it, I realize I've, I've, I've missed out a key ingredient, which is the classic is to put a blue cheese with it. So I would always use a Stilton in this country. We have a fantastic um, Crockton Bishop Stilton. Just scatter that over the top at the end and that, that complements it well. You know, it is an absolute classic combination. It's just a beautiful, really simple salad. That would be supper in itself for me. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope I've given you some inspiration and confidence to try some of these bitter flavors, whether you cook with them, tone them down with some cheese or something, or whether you just go for the salad like that, which is absolutely my favorite. But let us know how you get on. Let us know whether you like the recipes, or even let us know if you just had enough bitter leaves we will listen, I won't give up, but we might grow slightly fewer of them.